What the heck? I can't believe it. Have you ever read something where you thought your first, after reading your first impression was, what the heck? I can't believe what I just read. Well, this is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to um, talk about a, a case that I read that involved employment law um, as it relates to uh, people, um, Americans with disabilities, and see if this is the first impression that you get once I disco disclose what this case, particular case involves. So let's get started with the presentation. Hi, I'm Gayon. So today I'll be talking about ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, as it relates to remote work requests. So an employee with, uh, with a disability approaches you, your manager, and they are requesting a work from home due to a disability. So what is the correct protocol to follow to ensure that that employee is being treated fairly and within ADA compliance, okay? So let's first talk about the history of Americans with disabilities. So in 19, so the, the Rehabilitation Act of 1974 granted them civil rights to people with disabilities were then protected by law. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 73 provided equal opportunity, equal employment opportunities were granted. 1975 Education for All Handicapped Children Act was passed, which um, guaranteed equal access to public education to all children with disabilities. And then in 1990, Americans with Disabilities Act was passed, which ensured equal access to employment opportunities and to public accommodations. So in 1990, this is when um, you know empl employers had to grant you know equal opportunity for people with disabilities, and for public accommodations. This is when um, in public and employers um, had to ensure that people with disability have equal access to their facility. So that involves you know um, creating wheel wheelchair access in at, at buildings, you know public buildings. For, the, for transportation, et cetera, to make sure that people with disabilities are able to access um, work or you know, access public transportation. So that just was enacted in 19, 1990, which is only 30 something years ago. So that was very recent. So let's talk, so the case I wanna showcase today is the Bilsden versus Wells Fargo Security. So Robert Bilsden was a former manager director at Wells Fargo, and he had a physical disability requiring immediate access to the restroom. So he, he requested a work from home from his manager to work from home due to his disability. Okay, and as a result, his request was denied. He was, he was eventually laid off, which then led to a federal lawsuit. Bill then filed a lawsuit against Wells Fargo, and this occurred right here in 2024, and he was then awarded $22.1 million in damages. So what is the lesson learned? So Wells Fargo failed to engage in the interactive process, which is required on the ADA, and I'll talk to that in a moment. There were no reasonable accommodations provided for him. There were ADA non-compliant. Um, they, they had to pay you know, a, a high financial penalty for, for this case, and, the, and their reputation was damaged. So what was the, what was the organizational impact? They, um, they had to, um, you know, do a $22.1 million settlement, their reputation damage, and HR policy failed. Lack of proper training for managers and ADA, and fail and failure to prioritize employee accommodations. So those are the organization impact of that case. So moving forward, now, Wells Fargo is, is, is faced with the challenge today that now they have more work from home requests from employees with disabilities. So what is the correct protocol to follow to handle these work from home requests to ensure that they're not you know, in that situation again where an employee files a lawsuit against them? So here's some steps they can take, okay? They have to revise their policy, update ADA accommodation policies, especially as it relates to work from home requests. They have to make sure they're engaged in an interactive process. So. What is the interactive process? This is if if an employee comes to a manager and says, "I want to, I, I would like to request work from home due to a disability." This is when the inter interactive process starts. This is where the that manager should then start an interviewing process to sit with that employee, get all the details, 
find out what the medical what medical condition is, get documentation, see if it's you know if this if this is a um feasible thing that can do, they can accommodate this person. Is is this a justified request? And they should have an HR representative with that manager to um the, go through this entire process so that's what the interactive process is and this is where wells fargo failed in this regard they didn't do this and this is one of the reasons why they lost that that lawsuit they need to also make sure managers are trained properly to understand ada guidelines especially with work from home accommodations and they should also implement a tracking system so when i get these requests they're able to log it in the system and they also this they can also do follow-ups to ensure that that request is being followed through entirely Okay, so so these are things steps that can take for handling future um work from home requests. So what are some measures that 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 can that that can identify that this process is working? There's a reduction in legal complaints, you know, related to accommodations. They're getting positive feedbacks from employees with, with um disabilities, and there's an increase in employee intention in retention, especially with those uh, individuals with um accommodation needs. So what are the steps for managers? So if somebody comes with a, with a request, work from home, and, they're, and, and it is due to a disability, they have to assess the request, they have to review the documentation, and they have to engage in the inter inter interactive process with an HR person, okay? They want to innovate the feasibility. Is this something that they can accommodate? They got to see that. Is it justified? They want to make sure that they document the entire process, keep records of the entire interview, the conversations, the decisions made, everything is documented because Wells Fargo did not do that. This is why they lost that case. And they need to provide, they need to provide reasonable accommodations. If the work from home is not feasible, they need, to, they need to offer other accommodations. And they need to have a follow-up process, make sure they're following through with that employee, make sure that everything is followed through to ensure that that employee's needs are being met. And those are things that Wells Fargo did not do while they lost that case, okay? So as a result of this, every manager will be given a checklist. And this checklist is, is going gonna, gonna to comprise of seven items that every manager needs to make sure it is checked off when they're dealing with, with work from home requests, especially with an employee that, um, that's, that has a disability and they're requesting to work from home. Every manager will be given this checklist. So the checklist is just a reminder of what, steps need to be done and make sure that they are abiding by all these steps. They're confirming the request is, is based on, um, you know, on a document disability under ADA. Then, then they make sure that they're going to do the, the interactive process with an HR person that's going to do with them with the entire process. They want to assess whether the work from home um, can be met. Can they, can they meet those, that, that, those needs? They need to consult with the HR to ensure that they are compliant, they're already in compliant. They need to explore alternatives. If uh, if work from home is not feasible, they need to offer them alternative accommodations. They need to document every step to maintain a legal record. And they, they need to revisit and follow up over time with that employee to make sure that the employee is being met, their needs are being met and that they are satisfied. So this is a checklist that every manager will be given to ensure that they know what the process is, how to handle these kind of requests when an uh, employee with disability is asking for the work from home. So what are the takeaways from this? You want to engage in an in interactive process, as I said, to avoid the lawsuits, make sure you have an HR, HR person involved in that process. You want to update your policies to make sure ADA accommodations are included, especially for work from home requests. Um, HR plays a critical role in guiding managers through compliance, so you have to make sure HR is involved in through the entire process. And this Wolf Fargo case under, underscores the importance of proper training, documentation, and adherence to federal regulations. So this entire presentation, the premise of this was to show the challenge that Wolf Fargo had to, or is now dealt with to ensure that work from home requests are being handled properly within ADA compliance, within guidelines, HR is involved. So if an employee comes with, with a work from home request and, and there's a disability involved, they need to make sure that they're following all the protocol to ensure that they're not, you know, in that scenario again where they they have to go to court and there's a lawsuit against them. So this was a um, huge impact to uh, Wells Fargo. So now it's time to correct those mistakes and to ensure that they they don't get themselves involved in that situation again. And here, last uh, place here is here's the references of all of the um, information that I use to gather my research. 
to to get an understanding of what the what the ADA requirements are when, when you know as it relates to work from home requests for people with, with disabilities. So that's my presentation. Hope you got value. I hope I hope you did see that what the heck moment with that case with that twenty two point one million dollars that Wells Fargo had to pay. And that should this should be a lesson learned for all employers the importance of making sure that they are following employment laws and that they are ADA compliant is very, very important. Thanks for your time. This is Gayon here. Hope, I hope you found value in my presentation today. Thank you.